Hey guys, in this video I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about some of my favorite tips for doing well on the FRQs in AP Biology. So remember, AP Biology is a trademark registered by the College Board, which is not affiliated with and does not endorse this channel, but I think I have some good advice to offer. So here we go. The FRQs, or the free response questions, are part of Section 2 on the AP Biology exam. They'll account for approximately 50% of your overall score, and they're really, really important. I have my students practice these a lot just to get practice, because the more familiar you familiar you are with the FRQs, the better you will do. And that's the thing I'm going to keep saying over and over again is practice, practice, practice. And the more of these that you complete, the better you'll feel on the day of the exam. So within the FRQ section, it's a total of 90 minutes with a 10 minute reading period and then 80 minutes to answer. Now you're not required to take the entire 10 minutes to read, but it's highly recommended. So if you feel like you're ready to get started before that 10 minutes is over, that's fine. They're not going to take the pencil out of your hands, or excuse me, pen out of your hands if you start writing, but it is a good idea to use that full 10 minutes for reading all of the questions and outlining some of your answers. After the 10 minute period is up, the proctor will say so, and you will have 80 minutes for the answer period where you'll be answering six short questions that are worth three or four points each, and two longer questions that are worth 10 points each. And most of these questions are broken up into a series of sub questions as well. So what you'll need for the FRQs are a blue or black pen. You will need to write your answers in a blue or black pen. I have heard horror stories from students, not on AP Biology, but on other exams, where they've gone and written a response in pencil and then had to go over it in pen before the time was up so their response would actually get scored. So this is really important. And you should practice writing in a blue or black pen when you're doing practice FRQs too. You will need a calculator. There is a chance you'll have to do some calculations on the FRQ section. And this needs to be one on the pre-approved list by the College Board. It used to just be a four function calculator, but they have changed that. And so now you can bring most graphing calculators, but there are some still, for example, ones that need to be plugged into your computer or connect to the internet that are not allowed. So it's a good idea to check College Board's website to verify your calculator is one of the approved ones. Of course, you need your brain and all the practice and knowledge that you have with you. What you do not need are some of the following things. Scratch paper. You can't bring in your own scratch paper. I think that's a no-brainer, but if you need extra space to write down some of your answers, that'll be in the booklet. Um, you should not use a pencil on the FRQs. Again, it's a really good idea just to put that away once FRQs time gets started. Your phone, you shouldn't even have that in the in the actual room. And this one I feel like I need to say because in the past, I actually have heard a story of a student bringing their own formula sheet into the FRQ section, into the AP Biology exam, and then that counted as a, um, a material that was not permitted, and they had to call College Board, and I think they ended up canceling her scores. I don't know the end of the story, but uh, the idea is that you don't need to bring a formula sheet with you. They will provide one for you for the actual AP exam, so don't worry about that if you have a, your own formula sheet. Some of the best ways to prepare for FRQs, like I said before, are to practice old ones. And there are a lot of great ones out on the internet. I would start with the ones released actually by the College Board because those are the official ones and that's the exact wording and types of questions that you're going to see on the AP Biology exam. I would also advise looking at ones that you get in 2012 and then go beyond 2012. Anything that is a free response question, a free response question set before 2012 is actually outdated because the exam changed at that 2012 mark. So those are helpful sometimes just for general practice, but the scope of the exam changed as well as the types of questions changed. So if you practice FRQs before 2012 or that were released before 2012, it may not be the same line of questioning that you're going to see on the actual AP Biology exam. So you can Google AP Biology free response questions 2012 for any or any year and you should very easily be able to find the released exam materials. You can also find the old scoring guidelines which is the answer key for the AP Biology FRQs and what I really recommend for my students is to look for these old FRQs, actually take them, do them, and then score themselves so they can see what the graders are looking for and where they would have scored their points. Um, again, don't go beyond 2012, these are in the old format, but it's really, really useful to practice them, score yourself, and see where you're making mistakes and where you could have earned points. Some general tips for the FRQs. You want to plan your time, so make sure you use your reading period um, and plan an order of attack. Start with the easiest question first, the question you feel like you have the most knowledge base in or the one that you have planned out most efficiently. Don't leave questions blank. So you might be surprised on where you could end up earning points. Sometimes there's a few easy points just by like stating some biological process or you know some variable or some experimental value. So 
tackle every question even if you really have no idea what to do on it. And make sure you answer what the question is asking. Underline the command terms, so things like analyze, compare, identify. Those will probably be bolded, but it's a good idea to call them out anyway because that's what you're responding to. You don't need to write an essay on meiosis, for example, if it doesn't ask you to. If it says list two effects or two possible causes or two theories or two lines of evidence, list two, no more. Don't turn out a whole list of long things. Don't restate the question. Again, this is not an English essay. You do not have to format it with a thesis statement. And so the more just extraneous information, the less time you have actually answering these questions. You do need to write in complete sentences though. Bullet points, lists, and outlines, and drawings won't necessarily be scored. So please make sure you're writing in full complete sentences, even if it's not the best, most lovely structured essay. Don't obsess over perfect grammar. Points are not taken off for spelling errors or poor sentence structure. Obviously you want to make sure you are understandable and you're writing in good English, but if you don't know how to spell a word just do your best to spell it how you think it sounds um, and the graders will do their best to try to understand what you're trying to say. Again, don't fudge spelling if you don't know what a word is or you're trying to make up a word that sounds like it would be right, but if you are not sure of how something is spelled, do not uh, worry about a letter or two here and there. That will not necessarily influence your score. All right, math tips. There could be some math on the FRQs, so use your formula sheet. It is your friend. It is there as a resource. Show any work, so any sort of types of calculations that you might do, show how you set that up just in case you could get points for that. There are several past questions where you could get points for setting up the equation correctly. Um, as far as graphing goes, make sure you always remember to title your graphs, give your graph axes, um, titles, and units. Make sure you scale it properly and make sure you're using the correct graph for the appropriate situation. Don't use a line graph when you're comparing categories. Don't use a bar graph when you're looking at change over time. Find the things that would best match the data that you have. If you have extra time, it's always a good idea to read the prompt again, make sure you're not missing anything, and to always keep writing if you have the time. Um, it's important not to contradict yourself because um, as long as you say something correct in one section and then you say something incorrect in the next section, the readers will do their best to give you the point for the correct statement as long as it is not contradicted by a later statement that you have. So just keep in mind that you don't say something that would negate the first statement that you said. All right, and lastly, you will see things that you have not seen before on the FRQ. It is very common for the um, College Board to put out new experiments or strategies or laboratory techniques that you probably haven't studied, but you'll be able to use your knowledge of biology and you'll be able to synthesize new ideas and concepts that you don't know with things that you do know. Um, I think back to the 2017 comet assay question. My students hadn't studied what a comet assay was, but they knew the properties of DNA, they knew how electrophoresis works, and they were able to understand for the most part how this new laboratory technique worked, even though um, they hadn't studied that that particular technique in our class. And so you're going to be doing that on the FRQs too, so do not pan panic if some situation or scenario comes up that you've never heard of. You've got this. Take the time to practice these FRQs before the AP Biology exam, and you'll get better and better at them as you figure them out some more. All right, thanks so much guys, and I appreciate you watching this video and taking the time to study for the AP Biology exam.